Michael Swickert here. Welcome to Enchanting Stories of New Mexico, sponsored by the Fresh Chili Company in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Our award-winning Hatch Green and Red Chili is brought to you from locally owned farms in Hatch, New Mexico, the chili capital of the world. Speaking of weather, the chili growing season is hotter than normal. The Hatch Valley chili farmers live a challenging life when it comes to weather. They already had some hail that hit the, their crops, did some damage, but didn't destroy the crops since chili plants are resilient. What the extra hot weather did was cause the chili pepper plants that were started early and transplanted into the fields to mature sooner than was expected. It's not a bad thing, really, just wasn't planned that way. By the chili maturing early, the chili farmers were able to start the chili harvest several weeks early, and that's good. Now, there is some heat stress that they worry about some, but they're keeping up with it. Now, good news. If you use the checkout code PODCAST15, you get 15% off your order this week. Speaking of good chili this last week, we're processing Sandia Select which is a hot green chili in a 16-ounce jar. There's a smile every time you open one of these chili jars. When you want your food to be as hot as the weather, Sandia Select is a good choice. Let's do a little New Mexico history. When the Civil War broke out in 1861, a group of Southern Confederate soldiers took over the lower part of New Mexico, the Mesilla Valley and northward. Back then, New Mexico as odd as this seems, was from Texas to California, that whole area, the same area we call Arizona and New Mexico. It was just New Mexico. However, the Confederates divided New Mexico into two states and had firm control of what was then they called Arizona, the southern part of Arizona. There were many Union soldiers and sympathizers in California at that time who wanted to do something to keep the Union together. They, as a group, organized into a group of soldiers, about 2,300 or so of them, under the command of Colonel James Carleton, and they're known as the California Column or the, the Carleton Column. It was 11 com- companies of infantry, two of cavalry, two batteries were also under his control. They came overland from Southern California. Carlton's California Column in September of 1862 caused the Confederate General Sibley to abandon all thoughts of staying in New Mexico. In turn, he quit not only New Mexico, he quit El Paso, and he marched eastward with everybody he had. I'll do more about the California Column in a later podcast focused entirely upon it. But know this. 161 years later, in our area in southern New Mexico, there is a number of descendants of those soldiers. I was speaking to one the other day. They came, they fought, they decided to stay. And we today in southern New Mexico have on our neighbors some who hearken back to that time. Again, I'll talk about that in a later podcast. Michael Swickert here with Enchanting Stories of New Mexico, sponsored by the Fresh Chili Company. Hit subscribe to automatically get these podcasts. Now, fishing in New Mexico, which, yes, it's been just a little hot, but not bad for some people. The New Mexico Department of Game and Fish is committed to maintaining the quality of New Mexico's fisheries, including the fish habitat and restoring native sport fishes. There is a, here's something for you. There is an angler education fishing clinic that is offered. They offer basic fishing skill clinic to school kids, families, communities, and civic groups. You can go to the Mexico Game and Fish website. A fishing license is not required if you are 11 years of age or younger or if you're 70 years of age or older. Now, out-of-state anglers must purchase an, either an annual fishing license, a one-day license, or a five-day license. And um, if you have fish for dinner because you're pretty good at fishing, I have a little deal for you, which is the Fresh Chili Company products you may use Take a picture of that, post your recipe on the Fresh Chili Company 
Facebook page, and you might be, well, you might be famous for the fish that you cook. More history of our area. In 1870, the Silver Flat Mining Company was formed near Silver City, New Mexico, and the Legal Tender Mine was founded. The silver mine was actually the result of an accident. John Bullard and several others were prospecting for gold in the spring of 1870. They had been in that military unit I was just talking about, the California Column. Um, many of the men in that column were gold miners when they joined the military, and then they were gold miners when they got done with the military. After they got out of the service, they resumed wherever they were looking for gold. Now, silver was found near Lordsburg, New Mexico. A camp was set up to do a little mining. Bullard and several others were living near Silver City at the time on farms, but they were spending a lot of their time looking for gold. They heard about the silver mines, and they went the 40 miles over to Lordsburg to look at it. Now, what you need to know is that silver ore does not look quite like silver. Upon looking at some of the silver ore, John Bullard, remember we're talking about John Bullard, he said to his friends, well, if that's silver ore, I know where there is lots and lots of it. Sure enough, he did, and that's what started the silver rush in Silver City, New Mexico, and it was the start of the legal tender mine. More history. Did you know that New Mexico used to have a Capitol building that looked like one of those European castles? There's pictures, but nothing else left of it. It was because in 1892, while New Mexico was still a territory, the New Mexico Capitol building in Santa Fe one day caught fire. It was an accident. It was one heck of a big fire, and the Bucket Brigade couldn't do anything at all to stop the flames. Total loss. What was lost were many important documents. The building was replaced a few years later, but the documents, which were of a sensitive political nature, seemed to have been lost. What is interesting is that more than one historian has commented that some of the documents which were, again, sensitive political documents, disappeared during this era when many people were fairly certain that they were not in the Capitol building during the fire, a convenient fire for some people. The fire was accidental, though some of the papers which disappeared were perhaps, and I'm just saying what other historians have said, they were conveniently perhaps destroyed. There's no way to prove what happened, but we can sure wonder if the fire made some improvement to the political careers of some politicians in 1892. Speaking of buildings that burned, I guess this is the day to do it. Um, it's a hot day out. So in 1908, there were some very sad faces at, of students at New Mexico College of Agriculture and Mechanical Arts. We now call that New Mexico State University. These students had very sad faces. However, possibly not as many sad faces among the administrators of the institution. The first building on campus that served as a men's dormitory burnt down. It was inf infamously known as Klondike, which is kind of rustic, rural, and physically discomforting. Um, that's according to students who live there. It was at first a private venture, but in 1907, the college purchased the building and was serving about 60 men students. There's no insurance, $2,000 loss, and um, the good news, can I give you the good news? The good news is no one was hurt. The real loss is where the students, many of them escaped the fire with only the clothes on their back and their books and papers were lost. But again, no one was injured, so there was a certain celebration that Friday night when it burnt to the ground and everybody was still all right. At the time, the campus was about three miles from Las Cruces, so it was a problem finding a place for these students to stay. And today, of course, there's thousands upon thousands of dorm rooms. A little chilling news, both Big Jim and Sandia Select are roasted at this time, be available in the next weeks. They come in 16 ounce jars, and I, like I say, it causes a smile when you open them. One thing is for sure, all chili peppers are not the same. Some have more taste heat than others, some a little more sweet. Well, 
The same is true for onions. And New Mexico State University is one of two universities that really researches very deeply the um, onions in our area. Now, they do so for one of the tastes, which is sweet onions. Sweet means that they're not as um, pungent as other onions. Um, here in our area for sale at the Fresh Chili Company, there are some sweet onions. We're at the end of the season, so you have to get them pretty quick. And uh, there is a new product that we just have. It's Hatch Sweet Onion Dressing. Have I tried it? Oh, yes, several times, and it's very good. I have some at my house. It's very good on mashed potatoes and on steaks that I'm grilling. So 10% of the onions grown in our area are sweet, meaning they're not as strong. And uh, this Hatch Sweet Onion Dressing, I'm telling you, you should give it a try. Again, if you order, you can use the checkout code PODCAST15 to get 15% off your order this week. So uh, Numex Sweet is the holding name of several high productivity, low pungency, and disease tolerant onions. New Mexico State University researchers have been working on these onions clear back to the days of Fabian Garcia in the 19 teens and 1920s and started many of these chili pepper, pecan, and onion uh, research. Like many competitors, the onions are constantly being evaluated and adjusted to make sure they are the very best that they can be. And again, it's a great onion dressing. Michael Swigert here with Enchanting Stories of New Mexico. One thing that happens when people live in the Las Cruces area or you happen to be in our little slice of paradise, you can come by the Fresh Chili Company gift shop at 1160 El Paseo Road, Suite D7 in Las Cruces. It's open Monday through Saturday, yes, Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And there's some new products. There is a honey with hatch red chili in it that is just the best on biscuits. French fries are ever so much better with the Fresh Chili Company's Hatchup. It is ketchup and hatch red chili. You can come and browse and look at all sorts of things they have here. Again, Monday through Saturday, Fresh Chili Company Gift Shop, 1160 El Paseo Road, Suite D7. And it's open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday. This is Michael Swickard with Enchanting Stories of New Mexico, brought to you by the Fresh Chili Company. Thank you for your time today. We'll always have lots of news and stories about New Mexico with these podcasts. Now, if you have something or someone you would like me to talk about, write to me, Michael at FreshChiliCo.com, Michael at FreshChiliCo.com. Have a great rest of your day. Oh, yes, and eat plenty of that good Hatch Valley chili. Like I always say, some chili is good, more is better. Bye for now.